sensation seekers. My name is Cinephile ASMR, and today we are here to talk about the first omen. If you are new here, my name is Cinephile ASMR. I am your go-to guide for relaxation and the newest movies to talk about, so consider subscribing hitting that notification bell, and commenting what you think, but most importantly, follow me on Letterboxd. That is where I post my reviews and thoughts right out of the theater before I make any video. The first omen centers on Margaret, a woman of the faith looking to advance her spirituality, which prompts her to travel to Rome, but immediately she realizes the church and the people that she is surrounding herself with possess a very dark secret which could potentially open to life an evil incarnate, which leads Margaret on a path of darkness, deceit, and the Antichrist himself. I... <laughs> I really do not know where to begin with this movie, because as I am coming out of the theater, as I am assembling my thoughts, typing them up, and sitting here to formulate it all verbally, I kind of don't have any regret or kind of like hesitancy to say that this is not just by far the biggest surprise of this year, but even bigger, the greatest horror surprise of the 2020s of this entire decade. I, for all intents and purposes, had no idea that this movie was going to pack the visceral punch and commitment on all technical levels that it does. Call it the fact that this is a revitalization, reboot, prequel, however you want to frame it, of a film from the 70s, as is the case in a current trend of modern horror. That immediately kind of just puts me at a disadvantage and does not make me enticed to watch the movie. But I just didn't really think that this movie was anything worthwhile until I saw this teaser trailer for the movie. It's about a minute long, and I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, this looks kind of interesting. But still, I was really expecting this to be like a streaming movie that I watch, give it maybe like a 3 out of 5, and move on with myself. But this is the kind of movie that spoils every sense in your body to your core where after you watch this, every horror film that is from an existing franchise that attempts to revitalize a franchise, breathing new life and making more money, is going to look as meaningless and as a cash grab as it ever has. And if the director of this movie, Acacia Stevenson, is watching, I am terribly sorry. I was not familiar with your game at all. And I think it is quite interesting that this comes right next to the release of Sydney Sweeney's Immaculate, which I didn't review. I didn't dislike it, but I didn't love it either. Its biggest strength was its greatest weakness, was the fact that I felt it just continually tried to go to the next scare, which then made the movie very short, which I appreciated. It knew exactly what it was, and it lived within the confines of just being what it was. But because it relied so much on digital blood, on jump scares, it cheapened the whole experience. And when people talk about those last five to seven minutes, which are pretty terrific, it didn't have the impact that this movie's climax does, because it doesn't earn it. As I was watching the first omen, each act continually builds, and the technical elements here, from a directorial standpoint, not writing standpoint, but most especially a filmmaking and cinematography POV, along with a score that continually escalate the material to bigger and newer heights. And yes, there is a couple jump scares in this movie, but the thing that I immediately knew from the first scare in like 15 minutes of this movie was that it utilizes the scare before the sound. What I mean by that is visually speaking, in my opinion, the scariest parts in the jump scares happen before the loud noise occurs, and I think it is this beautifully, very mature way of kind of showing you this is the roller coaster's top, now you're going down instead of making it one in the same. A jump scare is bound to get a rise out of you, but it doesn't feel earned, it is not warranted, it 
just exists and is a cheap way. This movie, though, builds the scares through the atmosphere, through the looming sense of dread, of claustrophobic isolation that this coven, this group, this people on the church are hiding. And Margaret is just this fly on the wall. You see these moments that happen. And originally, what I've come to find out after the fact is that the first omen was originally NC-17. And that got me thinking, did this movie restrict or restrain that experience of feeling that grotesque bloodiness? Hell no. There is scenes in this movie that is exemplified through the camera work, through the score, and especially that edit, which I had my jaw on the floor. The imagery is the kind of stuff that is seared into your mind whether you like it or not. Like, I can pinpoint three to four entire sequences that utilize all of the elements behind a perfect filmmaker and a performance by Nell Tiger Free, who I had not heard of up until this point, and I couldn't believe the hold that this movie had on me. The hairs, the stress in the back of my neck tensed up. I gripped my chair. I have not done that in a horror movie, I think, since Jordan Peele's Nope, and it earns it. I'm trying to differentiate as I was building my review and thoughts for a rating of this as to whether this is just the surprise that this movie had because of my low expectations versus the genuine appreciation this movie deserves, and I can discern that this movie is terrific. I have never seen the original Omen, and this is a prequel to that, but I'm going to be honest, it doesn't really even become a prequel that feels like it has to tie itself in until the last five minutes, and I know for some it can feel like a flaw, but I honestly think by counting that as a flaw, you're disregarding the fact that for me, I completely forgot that this was in an existing world. It felt so unique, individual, and personal to itself. It stood on its own. Everything came together in a way that made this world feel so much more efforted and had like a teamwork sense to where a movie could have just been made that made back its budget. But this was so authentic and genuine. There was so much personality and vibrance in the stationary shots. This is the kind of movie that if you're on film Twitter, you will see like stills of this for the next 10 to 15 years. There's imagery in here from a lighting perspective. I don't know, like, did they shoot this on 35 millimeter? Because there's that texture to itself that you are not going to get in many other horror movies. And it was the kind of thing that put me on the floor. I was getting my ass handed to me every single scene. I was waiting for the other shoe to drop, for the rug to be pulled without under me, and it never did. It never did. It builds and it builds and it builds. There is a confidence and reassurance in this filmmaker. I've never seen any of Arkeisha's other stuff. She's done a lot of TV, but I've never seen it. So this is like her feature debut, but you wouldn't guess it at all. And as I said earlier, there will be a lot of immaculate comparisons, and that is not trying to disregard, in my opinion, what Sydney Sweeney did and the efforts she made. But in this film, similarly to hers, where it's about a woman trying to kind of imbue herself in the faith as a nun, and there's some things that happen in both of them thematically and narratively that do kind of wed themselves together. I think for me, there is like the two shots, the one at the end of Immaculate and the one towards the end of this, but this one hit me like a pound of bricks. There is scenarios from an acting POV, from a directing POV, and just from a story perspective where I thought to myself, there's no way they're going to go through that. There's no way they're going to do this. And they did. And then some. I'm, I'm shocked. I'm shell-shocked. I'm mind blown. This movie is the kind of thing that I really think for anybody who loves horror movies, experiences, or just a good time that will scare the hell out of you, I could not recommend The First Omen more. This might even be a better year for horror than 2022, and I have a video on my YouTube channel about my favorite films of that year and talking an entire segment in a video about the horror movies of that year. I did not think it could be beat, but the fact that we're in April, month 4 of 12, we have 8 months left, and we haven't even reached the time of year where horror movies thrive the most, and I can say, with Late Night with the Devil, and this
conversation of AI, of the state of the Hollywood industry, theatrical experiences, remakes, reboots, and franchises, I will swear by the notion horror films have never been in a better spot than they are now. They're being mass produced more than ever. Maybe like six to seven out of the ten are not very good, but those like 30% are exemplary. They're the kind of things that are benchmark horror films. The ideas, the stories that are being told, like the first omen and the way they're being told, and the ideas themselves are things that we need to talk about. If you're going to see this for anything, those last 20 minutes will have your skin crawling in a way that I don't think any other horror film this year could do, but I am prepared to be shocked, because with all that being said, Arcacia Stevenson, Nell Tiger Free's performance, Aaron Morton's camera work, you have Mark Coven's score, the edit, the production design, the way that everything comes into unison in a beautiful, beautifully yet terrifying way. I'm going to give the first omen an A. <laughs> Dude, I don't even know. Like, to hear that sentence come out that I gave this movie an A when four hours ago I was just fully prepared to have a good time at best or feel like I wasted two hours at worst is kind of actually melting my brain. I just think at this point we give a lot of passes to mediocrity, but Arcacia Stevenson and everyone involved in this production goes to show that passion, teamwork, and an A effort mindset will produce banging content. This is art. This is absolute poetry, man. The framing, the composition, the lighting, the story, and the way it evolves, the imagery. I'm not going to forget this movie anytime soon. But of course, if you got to this point in the video, also consider following my TikTok. I post virtually every day shorter form content. I go live Monday to Thursdays, typically live in a pretty busy household that doesn't go to bed until late. So if you want to kind of get to know me a bit more on a personal level, consider following my TikTok. But of course, most importantly, above everything else, I want to hear from you. What did you think of the first omen? I hope this video convinced you to go purchase a ticket. It is well worth it. I adore this movie. I am desperate but hesitant because of the fear this instilled upon me to go pursue this on a rewatch. Let me know down below. My question to you is, what is a horror movie prequel, reboot, or remake that outdoes the original or justifies its existence like this? I don't think there is one better than this, to be honest. Like, I'm, I'm sitting here just absolutely head over heels like this isn't my favorite movie of the year material, but... I'm just so glad this exists. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, feeling a little bit of relaxation, but getting some good info on some amazing filmmaking. I love you all so, so, so very much.